Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today's card uses vellum just for the challenge this month. I'm going to be using this You Wag My Tail set by My Favorite Things and some nested circles, minor spellbinders, um, and then some basil 40 pound vellum paper. So I'm going to start off by grabbing the outside and then I'm going to skip one and take the next one. You can use any nested circle set for this. I'm just creating a rainbow using these circles. Now I'm going to start off with some scored cardstock. So it's my card base. I've already scored it, but I haven't folded it. And I measured one quarter in from one side and one quarter of an inch in from the other side. I'm going to be making this more of a square card. So I'm just moving the circle off to the left here. Now I'm going to line it up with my marks. And then I'm going to take my T-square and draw a, a line across the center. And this is be going to become my rainbow line. So this is the line I'm going to use to line up my acrylic plate. So in my sandwich, I have my uh, top acrylic plate only covering halfway. So I'm covering the area that I actually want to cut. Now this is a straight edge acrylic plate. I also used a beveled edge and they were both pretty much the same. The difference was negligible. So I wouldn't worry about not having a straight edge plate. Um, so you can see I led with the non-cutting part of the paper and I'm going to do this again where I lead with the plate and it's going to be a lot easier I found. So I'll show you that in a little bit. So now I remove my circles and I'll get my rainbow, show you here how it's cut, just the top portion of each circle. And uh, now I'm going to take it's a, just a small cutting mat and a ruler and my X-Acto blade and I'm just going to cut the bottom portion so uh, right across that line that I drew and then my rainbow will pop out. You can see how it's a nice clean cut. So I'm just going to erase my pencil lines and now I'm going to measure uh, the distance bet uh, between the rainbow and the left edge and then make that same distance on the right and I'll fold it now and I'll uh, trim it right on my pencil line. That way I have an even square card. Now I'm going to take the die cut that actually came out. Now I'm creating another panel and vellum will be between these two panels. I'm going to stick this right in the hole because I want to make sure that I create the same exact cut on this other piece of paper. So now I'll remove my card base and I'm left with my die cut on this other sheet. Now I'm going to easily, this is really easy to do, put my dies back in and sort of uh, push them up against the edge and they slide right into the groove and you'll see exactly where you need to cut. Now I'm going to take my uh, T-square again and I'm going to draw that same line for the rainbow. And remember I've got the die cut in there so I already know where the bottom is so that it lines up the same as the card base. And now I'm going to lead with the plate. So you can see I have the bottom of my sandwich and now I've got the plate going in first. And I'm going to line it up with that pencil line I drew and then I'll run it through. And I found that it was much easier to roll through the machine when I had the plate going in first rather than the plate going in second. Now one thing I did not show is that I actually put it in the wrong way. So <laughs> I actually cut the bottom a little bit and I'm going to show this to you here. You can see there's a little groove at the bottom where I started to cut and I realized I was cutting the wrong side and um, so I took it out of the machine and did it the correct way. But I didn't think it was a big enough mistake to start over. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut the bottom of my rainbow with my X-Acto knife and my cutting mat. And then I'll erase those pencil lines. Now you can see how this is going to fit behind here, behind the card base front, and then I'll put the vellum in between. So I'm going to mark off where I need to cut it so it's the same size as my base. And you can see how they go together. So now I'm cutting a piece of vellum to go in between. I just cut it larger than my rainbow so that I could have space to put some adhesive. I'm just using a pencil to mark lines across so I can see where the border of my rainbow is. So when I do my stamping, I know I'm inside. I pulled these hearts from Lila's heart, but you can use any heart um, stamp you have. And I'm stamping it with Versamark and I'm randomly putting them all around my rainbow and I'm making sure that the top of the heart is parallel to the top of the rainbow. So they curve like the rainbow. Now this is some red tinsel embossing powder by Ranger, so it's got red glitter in it. Um, it just looks really pretty on this vellum. So you can see I'm going to line it up here so I can see through my rainbow with the hearts. I'm going to draw some pencil lines so I know where to adhere this once I get it, get some adhesive on it. Now I'm using this Scotch vellum tape. So I just got this, so I'm just experimenting with how it works. And it's sticky on one side and it's got release packing on the other. So I started tearing it and when I was tearing it, it got on my fingers and um, the adhesive is a very thin layer so it easily comes off the tape if you touch it. 
And what you want to do is you want to um, see I'm tearing it again. It's getting all over my fingers. That's the last time I tear it. So I start cutting it with a scissor, but you want to press it down firmly to the paper. So I'm going to just cover the areas here. And then I wanted to put a piece all the way across the top, but it was bigger than I needed, like wider than I needed. So I thought I would cut it down the middle, but it turns out that it's way too sticky. It's getting all over my fingers and the scissors, so I wouldn't recommend cutting it like this. What I decided to do was just put a few pieces and then one little one across the top that I then cut from the other side. And while I was cutting it, it was still sticking to my scissor, but um, it got on the paper just fine, so that was what was important. Now I'm going to peel this away and it comes off very easily, um, but as you can see the color of the release backing is kind of an off-white beige and also the color of the adhesive is that same exact color so it's not actually clear. So when I put my vellum on top and it sticks really well, um, it's a nice thin layer so you don't get any bulk. But I'm going to show it to you here that you can see kind of through the vellum that there is tape behind it. and it's yellowish. So um, I'm not sure this is the best tape for vellum. I used it in this case because you, were, you, were, you weren't going to see it and I, it was a good way to experiment with it. But um, anyway, it wasn't my favorite vellum adhesive. So of course, in my usual fashion, I put it on backwards. So I have to take it off, but this is a nice little experiment. It does come off pretty easily. So if you do need to get it off, it's, it's easily taken off. So now I'm going to put, I just use my regular adhesive since um, it didn't really matter. It wasn't going to show and I put it on correct. Now I already have a bunch of adhesive on the front of it now. And so I'm just gonna um, finish that off by just taking my ATG gun and putting adhesive where there isn't any because this is gonna go behind my card base front. So I'm just gonna put it all over and then I'll line my rainbows up and now my embossed hearts are facing in the correct direction. So once I got this adhered together, um, I thought I did a pretty good job. There was just a little bit of an edge that was showing, so I just took my scissor and um, I cut it off. And that's basically uh, the vellum rainbow. Now I'm going to stamp my dog in the middle, so I'm just kind of lining it up in my misty with my grid sheet. And uh, I'm going to uh, ink him up with some memento tuxedo black, and I'm going to stamp him onto a post-it first, and that'll experiment here so I can make sure it's exactly in the middle where I want it. But I also need that post-it for masking. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp him again in the middle, and then I'll cut out my post-it to mask the bottom. And I don't need the whole dog, just the bottom part. And then I'll take my dog bed and figure out where that's going to be, right, so that he's sitting in the center and then I'll use my MISTI to stamp that. Now my post-it came off, that's because I didn't have it, um, have enough of the sticky part of the post-it on there, but no big deal. So I just put it back on there, uh, inked up my dog bed, and stamped it down. And you see when I love taking the masking tape off, and he's sitting on his bed. I love this dog, he's so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna color him with the W markers, which I don't really use that often, but I thought it'd be a good color for this dog, kind of like a Weimar runner. Um, so I'm gonna color him like I usually do, and I'm gonna turn the music up. And when I'm done coloring, I'm gonna come back and show you how to create the fur texture um, for this dog. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the music up and you can watch me color.
All right, so I did the dog first so that I uh, would leave enough time for the colors to dry before I went in here to do the texture. Now I'm taking my chisel tip of my colorless blender and I'm drawing lines. So uh, randomly, it's important to do it randomly. So you don't want to do rows of lines. You just want to kind of randomly draw them. My lines range from probably a sixteenth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch. And I'm just going all the way down the dog and this is creating the illusion of fur. And you can see how it pushes the color away and really makes it look like fur. And so I love the way this came out. Now I wanted to create a glow around him. And so to do that, what you do is you take your colorless blender and just color all the way around. So you're kind of wetting the paper to take some color, but not lines of color. So it'll kind of start to bleed a little bit into the colorless blender fluid. And then I took my B000 and I colored just a little bit on the edge of the dog. And as I'm coloring around him, I'm realizing, you know, I really need kind of a thicker line. So I started getting thicker and then I went back to the uh, part I did first and made that a little thicker as well. And now once I have all this B00 laid down, I'm going to take the zero and once again, blur that line between the blue and the white. So I'm going to go all the way around here. And then I kind of thought it was a little bit, not enough blue, I should say. And so I took my B00 and then I just kind of added some flicking outward. So it kind of did look more like he was glowing and there were some rays coming out. It's very, very faint. So it, I don't even know if you can tell in the photos, but um, anyway, so that's kind of how I, I just felt like I needed something behind him, but you don't even have to do this. You can just leave it white on the outside. So after I added those rays, I blended it out again with the colorless blender. Right now I'm doing my sentiment. Um, this is such a great sentiment, it's so cute. And I'm inking it up with some Versafine Black Onyx ink. And then I needed to secure that with some tape there to make sure it didn't pop up since this is my folded piece of cardstock. And then I drew some lines because I felt like I wanted to frame it a little bit. I hate leaving white edges. I just like to have it kind of all contained. And that's why I draw my lines. So. Anyway, that is the card for today. I think the dog came out really cute and I like the vellum, just a different way to use it. Just thought I'd inspire you hopefully for the last few days of this challenge. So enjoy and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.